welcome to Harvester's Kids Zone online service. Whoosh! You can tell I'm so, so happy to be with you today. My name is Tomilayo. How are you? And I hope you're feeling great. Friends, I have with me one of my special friends. Princess, welcome, Jane Francis. Hello, friends. My name is Jane Francis, and I am super delighted to be with you today as we worship and learn of God. Awesome, Jane. It's so exciting having you with us today. Thank you, Tony. So, friends, last month, our theme was on forgiveness, and I'm sure we've learned a lot. Most, most importantly, we learned that God wants us to forgive others just as he has forgiven us. But this month, we are starting a new and exciting series about having influence. I'll be learning more from the book and from the story of David, King Saul, and also Goliath. But before we do that, we're going to do our famous three things which Jane is going to take us through. So Jane, over to you. Thank you, Tommy. So firstly, you get your brothers and your sisters if they are not seated already. And secondly, you tell mom and dad to call your cousins and your friends to join us online. And lastly, get your writing materials and your Bible and get seated already. I'm going to give you some time to do that and we will see you shortly. Sure. Welcome back friends, let's take a moment to say a word of prayer together. Let's take a prayer posture that is comfortable for you. You can lift your hands or put your hands on your chest, but I like to lift my hands and be sure to close your eyes. Yes, close your eyes and say after me, Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, thank you for your goodness, thank you for your goodness and loving kindness towards me and loving kindness towards me. Thank you because I'm alive and well. Thank you because I am alive and well. As I learn of your word today, as I learn of your word today, Holy Spirit grant me understanding. Holy Spirit grant me understanding and help me to be a doer of the word and help me to be a doer of the word. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Welcome back friends. What is influence? Do you want to share? Do you want to tell me? But not to worry, we're going to understand more from just the short experiment we have here. I want you to watch me closely as I tell you what I have on this table with me. I have right here with me a jar of water, as you can see, clean, clear jar of water, right? And I have an empty vest, you can see, empty nothing in it and i have with me a bottle of coca-cola right so what i'm going to do friends i'm going to pour this jar of water into this empty verse very slowly yes yeah, slowly you can see okay i think this should be enough so can you see can someone tell me what they can see water what's the color colorless right awesome it's colorless now i'm going to take the bottle of coke and pour it right into the jar just watch me all right and i'm going to do this very slowly and you tell me what you see afterward okay whoa whoa i'm going to let this settle in a bit wow Friends, what has happened right here? Can someone tell me the color or what they see? Is it still colorless? Is it? No, what color is this? It's the color of the Coke. Right, friends, wonderful. Thanks for participating in this experiment. This explains to us what influences. Is us being able to affect others with the light of God that is within us. As you can see, once I put the bottle of Coke into the jar of water, the color changed, and this looks almost exactly like the bottle of Coke. We're gonna be looking at this further in the story of David, King Saul, and also Goliath. And we're gonna be watching this video, and we'll share more when we return. See you. God's story, David and Saul. So part of God's story is about two guys named David and Saul, and it begins like this. You may have heard of David before, the little shepherd boy who stood up to the massive warrior Goliath and won. 
But that isn't the whole story. In fact, that's really only a part of it. The rest of the story starts with a man named Saul. See, God wasn't very happy with Saul, Israel's first king. The people of Israel had begged God's prophet Samuel to give them a king so they could be more like other nations. God warned the Israelites they would regret it, but gave them Saul as their king. And like anyone, King Saul wasn't perfect and soon started to mess up, disobeying God and leading Israel away from him. And that's where our friend David comes in. God wanted a new king to replace Saul, so he sent Samuel to a man named Jesse. Jesse showed Samuel his eldest sons, big and strong men. Samuel thought for sure that one of these impressive boys was to be king, but God had other plans. God told Samuel to find another son, so Jesse brought in little David. Even though David was a little scrawny and had the smelly job of taking care of sheep, God told Samuel to look at more than his appearance. Samuel obeyed and anointed David, God's special way of choosing people. When David was anointed, the good spirit that had been helping Saul rule left him and was replaced with a new spirit that wouldn't leave him alone. Imagine there was a bee buzzing around in your brain that you couldn't do a thing about. That may be what it was like for Saul. Since Saul was going a little crazy, his servants had David, a great harp player, come to the palace and play music to calm the king. Now, one day, David came to bring his brothers, who were working as soldiers, some lunch. What started out as a lunch delivery soon turned into one of the most famous stories in the Bible, where tiny David took down the massive warrior Goliath with a single stone. After this, David was like a famous rock star. In fact, David was so popular that Saul worried people would start thinking David should be king instead. Saul began to try and kill, sending him on dangerous quests where any normal guy would have died and even threw a spear at his head once. Eventually, things got so bad that Jonathan, Saul's son, who David had become great friends with, helped David escape. David wandered for years trying to stay out of Saul's grasp. Twice, Saul even got so close that David had the opportunity to kill him. But David refused to kill the king in charge. David continued to flee from Saul for years, and without God's blessing, Saul's army was losing to the Philistines. Soon enough, Saul's army had been defeated. Jonathan had died, and the Philistines were now chasing them. Saul was so afraid of capture that he chose to fall on his own sword instead of letting the Philistines catch him. When David heard of Jonathan and Saul's death, he went out and avenged them. And with Saul dead, David returned to Israel and at last took his place as God's new king. And that's the story of David and Saul. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. God made Saul king. Saul disobeyed God. God said he would take the kingdom away from Saul and chose David. David became popular. Saul became fearful of David. David had to run away. David wandered for years. Saul died. David avenged Saul. David took over as Israel's chosen king. And that's a part of God's story. Wow, friends, that was such an interesting story. Yeah. I learned and learned to all lot. Jane, would you like to share some of the things you learned? Thank you, Tommy. I learned quite a lot from the story. At first, I learned we are the light of the world. You know what that means? We have to affect situations and people positively in wherever we find ourselves. Remember God said, we are the salt and the light of the world. So my friends, we ought to shine brightly wherever we find ourselves and affect people's life and situation positively. Awesome, Jane. Thanks a lot for sharing that. Okay. Friends, I also learned that we are to influence others and affect situations positively. From the story of David, we could see that even before David got to King Saul, somebody has spoken a good thing or said a good word about David. And do you also watch that? That whenever David played the instrument before King Saul, the evil spirit left him. Wow, such a huge light. One of the interesting things about the story that we watched also is how David challenged Goliath. 
if it was a teenager, it was young, and it was not even in the army, but it remembered who it was in God. And because of that, he affected that situation by defeating Goliath. So friends, I hope you remember this every single time, that as children of God, we are to shine our light so bright and we are to affect situations around us positively. And now it's time for our memory verse. Hey friends, it's time for our memory verse and I am super excited to take the memory verse today. Okay, remember the first time, I am going to say it and you will watch and listen. The second time, I will say it slowly and you will repeat after me. And the third time, we are going to say it together. Okay, friends. This time, I will be saying it alone while you watch and listen. Our memory verse for today is taken from the book of Matthew in chapter 5 and verse 16. And it says, In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Did you get that? Okay, you don't have to worry if you didn't get that because this time I am going to say it slowly and you will repeat after me. Okay, our memory verse for today is taken from the book of Matthew in chapter five and verse 16. And it says, in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your father who is in heaven did you get that yeah so this time around we are going to say it together at the count of three two one our memory verse for today is taken from the book of matthew in chapter 5 and verse 16 and it says in the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. Wow, friends, I had such an amazing time with you today. Jane, how was it for you? For me, I had great fun having to learn a lot from the life of David while he influenced situations around him. I hope you learned quite a lot, friends. Wonderful, Jane, that's awesome. So friends, remember as we go into our week, let us influence and shine our light so bright. We're not gonna end today without welcoming our new friends who are joining us for the first time. If today is your first time with us, you are super welcome. Thank it's so you. glad having you with us today and I hope you had so much fun. Please ask dad or mom to text new to the number showing on the screen. We want to reach out to you and connect more with you. Friends, this is never goodbye, but we know you're going to have an amazing week. Take good care and bye-bye.